So there's no doubt that they're very eager uh, to see my departure. I have not uh, been a part of any effort to draw him out. Check State House redistricting off the lower chamber's list. Now it's on to the debate over congressional districts with just 30 days left. Texas lawmakers have a lot left to do. Will they overshadow the budget crisis or even force us into a special session? It's all ahead next on Session 11. From KXAN Austin News, this is Session 11. Live interactive breakdowns, insights, interviews, and our weekly roundtable discussion. You're watching Session 11 on KXAN Austin News. Securing Texas border by air, the latest legislation to combat drug violence and illegal immigration. Good morning, I'm Robert Hadlock. Thank you for joining us here on Session 11. Today we have Congressman Michael McCall and his plan to label Mexican drug cartels terrorists. Plus he responds to the redistricting map that could put another Austin congressman at re-election risk. Right now our political reporter Josh Hinkle here to tell us how you can interact with us on our morning program. Josh? Good morning, Robert. First, we've got a great on politics panel lined up today with Jay Root from the Associated Press and John Moritz from KXAN.com. You can take part in our budget roundtable this morning by logging on to KXAN.com. And while you're there, click on the On Politics tab at the top. You'll go straight to our special political site where you can check out my latest blog post. Plus, click the blue bar at the top to chat with us. Our panel will field your questions a little later in the program. Robert? Thank you, Josh. Our newsmaker is asking the federal government to help Mexico win the war against drug cartels and in the process protect the Texas border. Austin Congressman Michael McCall is the chairman of the Homeland Security Subcommittee on Oversight Investigations and Management. He spoke with Josh here in the studio about his upcoming visit with the president of Mexico and his high-tech hope for a bird's-eye view of the border. So you have proposed a bill that would designate uh, Mexican drug cartels as terrorist organizations. What are you trying to accomplish with this? Well, I think the situation in Mexico is getting very dire. And, uh, it's a crisis. Conditions are deteriorating down there. And I really think we need to, uh, it needs more attention, focus on our neighbor and friend of the south. Uh, and it's really designed to help Mexico in their war against the drug cartels. Uh, to, in designating them as foreign uh, terrorist organizations, it gives us greater tools to go after them. Uh, we can freeze their bank assets. We can deport them even if they're here illegally. Uh, and then there's a 15-year penalty provision on top of the underlying offense. So if someone's providing material support to the, the drug cartels, there's a 15-year enhancement on that. But I think most importantly is to uh, basically call them what they are, and that is that, that they are terrorists. They're terrorizing uh, the civilian population. Uh, they have engaged in political assassinations, uh, assassinating uh, mayors, police chiefs, uh, uh, gubernatorial candidates. Um, and I think in, in terms of this designation, it will allow us to work more closely uh, with Mexico in what I consider to be the answer to, to the problem, and that is a joint intelligence, joint uh, special operations uh, uh, mission, if you will. Something like what we did in Colombia, uh, which was very successful. Uh, and, and this has precedent to it. Uh, President uh, Clinton uh, designated the FARC uh, in Colombia, the drug cartel uh, FARC as a terrorist organization. So <clears throat> I think there's a history uh, and, and lessons learned from that experience we can apply in Mexico. Uh, I'll be meeting with President Calderon uh, in Mexico City uh, to discuss this and uh, uh, I'm hopeful we can uh, move forward to, to make uh, Mexico safer. We can't afford for them to lose. Uh, if they lose in this uh, war against the drug cartels, uh, we lose as well. Uh, and if Mexico becomes a failed state and the drug cartels take it over, which is where they're going, um, then we really do create a, uh, what I believe to be a haven not only for drug cartels, but organizations like Al-Qaeda and Hezbollah. It seems like maybe the Mexican government hasn't been too thrilled about a lot of this. Uh, with your meeting, what are you hoping to accomplish with that? Well, the, the, this is designed to, to help them, you know, not to uh, damage them in any way. And I think, you know, the sovereignty is a big issue uh, for them. but. Uh, I think privately they'll tell you that they, they do want this support. Uh, publicly in the, you know, the politics down there, the political will is somewhat lacking, but you, know, it, it's, you can't put our guys down there with one hand tie, you know, tied behind their back. And I think this really hit a, 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 a true crisis when Agent Zapata was shot and killed down there. So one of our law enforcement agents was killed, uh, Agent Avila was wounded. I met with Agent Avila. He, he described the scene as just sheer terror. Uh, you know, 10 
uh, Los Zetas uh, members coming out with AK-47s, spraying the vehicle with over 80 rounds. Um, and this is unacceptable. When they're going after our guys down there, and now we have threat information that they're targeting law enforcement on this side of the border. So I had a hearing on you know what uh, is the U.S. role in the Mexican war against the drug cartels. Um, I asked uh, the State Department, Department of Defense, and Homeland Security, what is our plan, what is our strategy? And we really don't have one. And I think we need a plan, particularly if we're going to put our people down there. Uh, we need to protect them, you know, as well. The next hearing when we return uh, uh, back to Congress next week will be, you know, what, what are we doing on this side of the border and what do we need to do to better protect uh, <clears throat> and, and secure that border, uh, which is, I think, is, is vital to our national security. I was just down in Corpus um, Christi yesterday. We just got an unmanned aerial vehicle, a UAV, that is doing a surveillance missions down on the border. Uh, <clears throat> this is cr a critical asset uh, in terms of getting intelligence from the air you know, the eyes of the sky reporting that to Border Patrol and the sheriffs on the ground to uh, apprehend those trying to, trying to cross. Congressman Cuellar and I from Laredo have worked very uh, well together on this uh, issue. We both serve on Homeland Security Committee, uh, and we've asked Secretary Napolitano to provide more of these UAVs to the state of Texas. We have 1,200 miles on the border. Uh, Arizona has uh, three of these UAVs. We only have one, and I think uh, Texas deserves uh, more. How much does something like that cost? It's, it's got a fairly uh, heavy price tag. Uh, it's about $20 million uh, per UAV with the system and everything. Uh, but what we, uh, an another creative idea in terms of budget <clears throat> is to get uh, smaller aircraft like, say, King Air and have a FLIR, the FLIR camera attached to it so we could have, you know, uh, more of these planes uh, at, at, at less cost. And uh, Civil Air Patrol uh, is willing to do this as well. They're a volunteer organization. So there are a lot of creative uh, ways I think we can uh, provide that kind of surveillance that we need from the air. People debate the spillover issue, but the spillover crime, crime is here. Um, the drug cartels are here. Uh, after Agent Zapata was killed, a sweep was done throughout the nation. There were 450 drug cartel associates who were picked up. Uh, many in this area, and in Houston, uh, and in Dallas. Um, so the fact that they're here, the spillover of crimes here, it's a matter of you know, when is it going to turn into spillover of violence. And that's what we're trying to prevent uh, with a, a, a policy to, to secure the border. You know, I've met with Art Acevedo on this and, and Steve McCraw at DPS, and uh, they are here, and the presence is here. Uh, the drugs are going through Austin. You know, I-35 is a corridor, uh, and my biggest concern is what you see happening in Mexico when you got the rival cartels warring with each other and the military cracking down on them, uh, my biggest fear is that that situation uh, evolving in the United States. And, and so, uh, it, again, it's not only a threat in Mexico that we got to help them deal with, but right here in this country. I'm glad they, we picked up 450 of these guys after Agent Zapata was killed uh, in cold blood, but I think we need to uh, uh, enhance those efforts uh, here. You know, part of the... Uh, Debate when, you, when I meet with the Mexican Congress, what they'll tell me is, well, look, you're, you're partially to blame for this problem as well. And, and to some extent, they're right. Our consumption and our appetite for drugs uh, drives this. And, and of course, there are guns going south, uh, southbound into Mexico. Uh, one plan I have to help pay for some of this stuff is, is you know, we estimate about $30 billion in cash uh, is going southbound back into Mexico from the drug deals here uh, and weapons. And so if we had greater uh, intensify our efforts at the border to seize the cash and the guns going southbound, uh, that would take their lifeblood away from them. Uh, it would disarm them, uh, and it would help pay for our operations if we can seize $30 billion. Well, what do you think? Does Texas need more federal resources for border security? Log on to KXAN.com and answer our On Politics poll. We'll see what you have to say at the end of the program. Beyond the border, Congressman McCall responds to some tough comments from a Democratic colleague in Congress. Totally to place uh, Travis County, three-fourths of our county, under the control of Tea Party sympathizers. That's what Congressman Lloyd Doggett had to say on our program last week, accusing McCall and other Republicans of pushing a map to split Travis County four ways and force him out. Why McCall says he has no part of that plan, coming up here on Session 11.